All over the world, the civilizations who came before us have left clues about who they were, how they lived, and what they believed in. Most of the time, experts are very good at picking up on these clues and explaining what they mean to the public, but sometimes they'll come across discoveries that leave them totally perplexed. Everything you're about to see in this video has provoked wonder among archaeologists, but it's a form of wonder that comes without any definitive answers. The sun disk of Ballyshannon is remarkable for a number of reasons, one of which being that it's the earliest ever example of sheet gold work located in Ireland or neighboring Great Britain. The tiny disk is made of a thin type of gold foil and was discovered in 1669 at a site where, according to the limited records of the time, the tomb of a man of gigantic stature was located. As no further details of the supposedly gigantic man's measurements were published, some locals chose to believe the legend that he was an actual giant, one of many who were said to roam the hills of Ireland in ancient times. The disc is somewhere between four and four and a half thousand years old and features a raised cross-shaped decoration surrounded by circular patterns. Sun disc is the name given to any object that looks like this. Similar examples have been found belonging to many cultures across the planet, but we're not totally sure what their purpose was. A puzzling discovery doesn't necessarily have to be ancient in order for it to be deemed mysterious. Moving across Ireland, we find this enormous Celtic cross design made of treetops in Calea County, Donegal. Nobody can say for sure how long it's been there. The cross is more than 300 feet long and can only be seen from the air, so it wasn't until a private plane flew over it that anyone realized someone had been using the forest to make art. The design of the Celtic cross is ancient and goes back thousands of years, but many people living in the area believe that this may actually be the work of a local forester named Liam Emery. Emery died in 2010, so he's not around to confirm or deny whether he's the man responsible. If it really was the work of one person acting alone, it's a spectacular feat. There are thousands of trees involved in the design, and so making it could have taken several years. When local authorities decided to lower the level of a reservoir in Karnataka, India, they found a space-age looking puzzle waiting for them when the waters receded. It's a complicated, hard to follow stone monolith full of designs that look quite unlike anything that historians and archaeologists have seen elsewhere. There is one group of people who believe they've seen something similar though, and that's fans of the science fiction TV show and movie Stargate. The monolithic site has been named Saharaslang, and their most prominent feature is a stone marked with 10 precisely cut circles, which just so happened to look like the dial home device used in Stargate. There are further markings on the adjacent rocks, but the water has weathered them too badly for them to be deciphered or understood. Making circular cuts into the stone like this would presumably involve the use of technology, but the water levels in the river Shalmali meant that prior to the draining of the reservoir, the rocks had been underwater for centuries. How could anyone have done this to solid rock? And what did they mean by it? The Inga Stone in Brazil is a site of great historical and archaeological importance. It's probably also a site of great astrological significance. Those are the things that experts can agree on. What they can't agree on is who made it and when. The 150-foot-long stone, which stands 15 feet tall, is right in the middle of the Inga River and close to the town of Inga hence its name. If the work of Francisco Pavia Alemani, a Spanish engineer who studied the rocks during the 1970s, is to be believed, the carvings in the stone were probably made by an indigenous people who lived at the site until the mid-18th century. Brazilian researcher Gabriel Baraldi has a wildly different take, though. He thinks the carvings are closer to 6,000 years old. Among the carvings of animals and fruit are some other markings which look a lot like basic interpretations of constellations and stars. It's possible that the Inga stone was a crude type of star chart, but was it a star chart for people living a few hundred years ago or a few thousand? To the untrained eye, 
Silbury Hill in Wiltshire, England, is just another big green grassy mound on a landscape full of them. A trained eye, however, will be able to tell you that this is the biggest prehistoric mound in all of Europe, and it has plenty of myth and legend attached to it. Dating back to the late Neolithic era, the human-made hill is almost the size of some of the pyramids of ancient Egypt. Positioned closely to an equally mysterious set of stone circles, Silbury Hill has frustrated archaeologists for years because it steadfastly refuses to give up its secrets. Digs have been going on since the 1680s, but although plenty of deliberately placed clay and flint have been found within the mound, nothing that could identify its purpose has ever been uncovered. In the absence of any factual evidence, local legends say that this is the burial mound of the near-mythical King Seal, buried with his horse right at the heart of the structure. Edward Drax, who led an excavation in 1776, told of a 40-foot cavity at the base of the hill, which he couldn't gain access to. Could the tales of a regal resting place be true? The standard of craftsmanship on this bee pendant would be considered good by modern standards, so it may surprise you to find out that it's 3,800 years old. The jewelry was found inside the Minoan Palace of Malia on Crete. Specifically, it's found within the necropolis. The latter part is understandable. In the culture of the time, the bee symbolized a connection between the underworld and the natural world and so objects bearing bee symbols were often buried with the deceased. It wasn't even uncommon for whole tombs to be shaped like beehives. The person this pendant was buried with must have been especially important, because the labor that went into making it was intensive. To create the honeycomb effect, the artist would have had to glue tiny beads of gold to the surface using an adhesive made of copper salt and glue, but without the benefit of glasses or a magnifying glass. The ancient Minoans clearly had a grasp of art and design that eluded most of the world at that time, and still eludes most people all these years later. For a string of text that's only 10 letters long, the Shugboro inscription has done an excellent job of keeping historians and researchers guessing for centuries. The Shugboro inscription gets its name from the monument it's carved into, which can be found in Shugboro Hall, England. The Shepherd's Monument is an ornate sculpture containing a relief of a Poussin painting and a 10-letter code that nobody has ever been able to translate. Peter Shi created the sculpture in 1763, but beneath his faithful reproduction of the Poussin painting, The Shepherds of Arcadia, are the eight letters O U O S V A V and V. Below and to either side of the eight letters are a D and an M. The cipher remains uncracked and is even referenced in The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. Minds as great as Charles Dickens have studied the inscription and tried to break the code, but despite many possible translations, it's likely that nobody will ever know if they've hit upon the artist's true meaning. If he ever had one in the first place, it might just be a 250-year-old prank. If a supernova happened in the night sky tonight, every powerful telescope in the world, as well as those in space, would be trained on it. Astronomers and scientists would make the most of the opportunity to learn as much as they possibly could about star creation and star construction. The people living in the Himalayas 6,000 years ago didn't have the option of using telescopes, but they still wanted to make a record of the spectacular sight they were being treated to. Mistakenly believed to be a depiction of a hunting scene for years, experts now believe that this elaborately carved painting records the explosion of supernova HB9, which would have been visible to the naked eye on Earth in the year 3600 BCE. The art was discovered inside a cave in Burzama, India during the 1960s. The disks seen in the sky in the painting were at first thought to be the sun and the moon but it was always considered to be odd that the moon was depicted to be as bright as the sun. It's now thought that this is a nighttime image and that one disc is the moon and the other is HB9, which would have had a moon-like brightness. The Nazca Lines in Peru are already considered to be a mystery, 
we can't say with any certainty who made them or why. Now we found a further mystery within that mystery. At one of the most remote locations covered by the lines, a mountain plateau, there's a depiction of an ancient Indian mandala. In Indian religion, the symbol represents the whole universe. Over time, it's come also to represent the philosophy that life is a cycle of death and rebirth that never ends. In other words, it's an image that contains a profoundly spiritual concept. But what's such a uniquely Indian design doing scratched into the earth of Peru, on top of a mountain where barely anyone will ever see it? It's a 180-foot wide drawing of a symbol which should, by rights, only have been known halfway across the world at the time the Nazca lines were drawn. Archaeologists and scientists are so far away from having a reasonable explanation for this that they like to avoid the question altogether. The ancient effigy of a serpent that appears in the earth of Peebles in Ohio, USA is the single largest earthwork effigy in the world. We hope you enjoyed that fact because it's the only solid fact anybody knows about it. On balance of probability, the 1,330-foot-long effigy was probably the work of the Adena people, who lived between Wisconsin and Mississippi 3,000 years ago and disappeared approximately 2,200 years ago. Many prehistoric mounds that can be found within the area have been attributed to them, but none as enormous as this giant snake, which is at least three feet tall at every point and may once have been taller. There's a school of thought which says that the serpent is swallowing an egg, although others think the spherical object close to the snake's mouth is supposed to represent the moon. There's a wrinkle in the Adena people theory, because charcoal samples taken from the mound appear to date back to the year 1000 or thereabouts. That would make the mound much more recent than most people believe, and make the fort ancient peoples the most likely candidates for its creation. The Minaret of Jam in Afghanistan has a charming name, but it's one of the world's most lonely minarets. In fact, it's all that remains of the legendary lost city of the Turquoise Mountain in the country. When it was created during the last years of the 12th century, the minaret was part of a huge mosque that sat on the riverbank. The foundations and courtyards of the mosque are still there, but everything else is long gone. If the legends of the turquoise mountain city are correct, then it was the world's greatest early multicultural city, where many creeds and religions lived harmoniously side by side. As with many ancient cities in this part of the world, it was invaded and destroyed by Mongol hordes during the 13th century. The survival of the 213-foot-tall minaret when everything around it perished has to be considered a near miracle. The colorful spire is made of tan-baked bricks and is sadly becoming structurally unsound. Experts fear that one more major earthquake would be all it takes to send it crashing to the ground, taking almost 1,000 years of history with it. We'll end our video tour of mysteries with an object that we know literally nothing about, and nor does anybody else. This stone face came out of the ground in Sampson County, North Carolina, when a local farmer was plowing his land. It's two feet from forehead to chin, and one and a half feet across from ear to ear. The fact that it's very severely weathered could point to it being extremely old. But as it's made from sandstone, we can't say for sure. Sandstone weathers very quickly, so the real age of this old face could be anywhere between a couple of hundred years to a couple of thousand years. Although making stone faces was a common practice for many an ancient race, Archaeologists are unaware of any ancient people living in or around North Carolina who designed anything akin to the sculpture, so it remains an enigmatic mystery. It could even be a joke carried out by the farmer himself, although naturally he insists it's a genuine artifact. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.